Good afternoon, everyone. This is Elaine Groman on Earth Wisdom Circles. Today I have decided that I'm going to do a solo show. And what prompted me to do this is the, a lot of questions that I have received from listeners, from individuals that have sent me emails, or we've had conversations, and also information that is coming forward now that is referred to as the new awakening. Um, the show title today is Intuition, Life's Silent Navigator. And I thought that I would talk today about our intuition, how it works, how we can learn to trust it, and what are the barriers that have prevented us from learning about this, and ways that we can begin to embrace it once again. Our intuition is often referred to in my thinking has been kind of given a bad rap <laughs> because what is often used synonymously with intuition is the word psychic. So it is an, it is an accurate uh, description, but it is a misunderstood term. So many people banty the term psychic around and without really understanding the responsibility of that word. So let me just kind of um, deconstruct the word psychic, which is really simple. Psychic means of the mind. So psych means mind, like psychology and sociology. Those things, this, the, the prefix psych means of the mind. Now, of the mind does not mean of the brain, although the brain is an intimate and intricate part of our ability to use our psychic or an intuitive information. Now, kind of deconstructing the word intuition means that if you look at the prefix of that, in means incoming, incoming information but also already built within you. Tuition means your ability to express and feel and understand. So our body, our incredible human body is designed with such intricacy and repetition and uh, supporting systems that help us interact with the living world and also interact within ourselves, meaning to act, to create an action or to make a decision about an action that we will take. So what I want to share is that every human being is already quote unquote psychic. I'm going to just switch a little bit here. Um, meaning we have the capacity if we are taught how to do it appropriately and with dignity and honesty and integrity our intuition should be a part of our everyday experience the big challenge that we have is trusting it because we have all been taught through culture through religion, through our own experiences that we don't necessarily know how to trust ourselves. Excuse me, because we've had experiences where we sought something and went in the direction of something and later understood that we missed the signal that we were feeling, often referred to as our gut feeling. So let me explain a little bit, if I can, about how these systems work. And to also share with you, um, I am going to be doing an in-person audience reading this Wednesday, which will be September 22nd, 2021, in Farmington Hills, Michigan, from 7 to 9 p.m. And it is, it is open to whomever would like to attend. It's limited to 20 people. Uh, 
I do have people that already have signed up and registered. It is two hours, often it runs a little bit over. And I ask people to come in about 15 minutes ahead of time so that you are settled and prepared in your mind and your body is in a good place. So that kind of leads me into what I want to share. So when people come and witness someone like myself doing an audience reading, they, my intention is not to single myself out as being separate from other people. And for those who have ever attended an audience reading that I have done, I always say, exactly what I am doing, you can learn to do. You are doing it already, but you often don't know how to read the signs or read the signal, signals or quote unquote, understand the language of your intuition. So our sensitivity is already a part of our human body. Our sensitivity is literally in the word sensitivity is immediately connected to our senses. Our sensitivity is our sensitive, our, our senses give, providing information. So typically we speak of our five senses, our ability to hear, see, feel, taste, touch, and know. So our knowing is often referred to as the sixth sense. So every, every amount of information that we are perceiving through our senses is providing information. So we, have to, we are already learning in our infancy and childhood into our adult life how to navigate our senses. But it becomes so automatic that we don't really take the time to look at it and understand what is it trying to share with us? What is it trying to tell us? So as an example, if you were to touch something that was hot, your body is perceiving that heat. Now, there's certainly many levels of heat. There can be warmth and a little bit warmer and a little bit warmer until it gets to a hot sensation, until it gets to a scalding sensation, or your body begins to have a reaction. We have the sensitivity of touch. If we have had no damage to our nervous system that prevents that uh, tactile engagement of, for instance, feeling temperature. So this is part of our body's inborn protection. Again, one of our senses that is providing information for us. Unfortunately, some individuals due to an anomaly of their, a, a challenge within their brain, whether there was damage of some sort whether there was a malformation of some sort or whether there was some neurological impairment or injury that would sever or inhibit the ability to perceive a tactile sensation. But barring that, imagine that someone is fully um, capable of feeling these things. So from our very infancy, we are engaging in the world in multi-sensory ways. Likewise, but often without any guidance to help us understand this, we are also perceiving intuitive information. Information that is not spoken, information that is simply felt through the nervous system that will help us to perceive things, whether it is in an auditory way, in a visual way, in uh, sparking an imaginative correlation that helps us to understand what we are receiving through um, a taste, a smell, etc. So what I like to try to do is to demystify what our intuition is so that we can begin to learn how to 
speak this language. And I intentionally use the term language because the more sophisticated our language becomes, the more aware you are of the meaning and the more literate you are with this sophistication of language. And in, in turn, what I mean by this is our sensitivity to our senses and what they're providing us. The more that we can begin to gather all of this information together to get a clear picture, to get a clear understanding, to have a clear awareness of the information we are perceiving. So to, again, to demystify some language, many people hear of the term clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, claircognizant. So the word clair is a French word that means clear. So clairaudient, audio, means clear hearing. Clairsentient means clear feeling because we are sentient beings, which means we have this physical body capable of perceiving sen sensitivities, thus sentient. Clair um, cognizant, which is clear knowing, which is a very important part of a fully developed mind and brain, but mind in particular, so that we can begin to touch or interact and perceive information beyond our personal and present experience. This is what an intuitive is doing. They're learning how to and have built the language within their experience of intuition. And at one point it was described to me as standing in a river and casting out your rod and reel, casting out your line, and at a certain point catching that um, information and reeling it back to you so that it can be understood. Now, does that mean that you're catching all of the information or all of the fish that are in the stream? No. But it is, it is catching that where you intersect with that moving information, where it is you are turned in, tuned into on the dial of your own perception the information that is within the band of information you are capable of holding. So a number of years ago, I had the first time I had the opportunity to have a radio show was um, I was very grateful for that opportunity, but I had a little bit of resistance because of the title of the program and um or the the, sh the network program and it was uh called psychic radio and again i want to thank those who included me in that opportunity but when i had a meeting with the gentleman who was so gracious and so kind tim roberts from cbs hi tim um i i honestly shared with him my reticence to being kind of thrown in with the misunderstood notion of psychic radio. Because to me, um, this is not entertainment. Psychic, to be a psychic or to have the use of your mind is not meant to be entertainment. It is meant to provide information and thus add to education, add to wisdom, add to um, clarity of how we are all connected 
to one another, how we are all connected to everything that is happening in the world, how we are all connected to the living presence of the world, and understand that this is within us. So in this wonderful meeting that I had with Tim Roberts, I said, you know, I would rather educate people. And so he so kindly and graciously invited me to create whatever I wanted to create. And so that was the beginning of my first show called Going Beyond Medicine. And even though it was on psychic radio, it to me, it had a much deeper meaning that we needed to understand that we need to understand ourselves. So I have had the experience of being around individuals who grossly misused or misunderstood their abilities, in my opinion, as quote unquote psychics. And I would recognize that more harm than good can be done. And so I would always say to people, I try very hard when I'm doing a reading with someone to interpret the signals as clearly as I am able so that I don't misinform. And so in the nearly 20 years that I have been doing this intuitive work, um, but really have been doing it all my life, but having studied with experts and honed the skill with working with thousands of people, then I, I developed a language that I understood symbolically and clearly for my ability to share with others. So intuition, intuition, life's silent navigator is very intentional why I am calling this show that title, life's silent navigator, because it is information that we internally begin to metabolize, begin to ingest, begin to allow it to feed our lives, or it can be detrimental to our lives. This week, beginning on, I believe it was Friday, there, was, there has been and continues to be until Wednesday, I believe it is, or Tuesday, a beautiful gathering of two extraordinary women, Grandmother Flora DeMaio and Unchi Read Along Visitor Holy Dance, whom I had the opportunity to interview last week, Grandmother Flora DeMaio, that we are in a time of awakening. And what that means is that veils of misinformation are slowly being dissolved so that clear information can begin to be understood, can begin to be integrated into our lives so that we can more consciously and actively participate in our human life in the very limited amount of time that we have here to contribute to the enhancement, the growth, the beauty of life itself. We do not give ourselves life. We are privileged to have been given life. And regardless of the circumstances that we find ourselves in, the challenges we experience, there is a gift. And we often, because of our um, cultural belief that a gift is only something that we have wanted. 
and the gifts that we ask for for the holidays, so gifts we ask for for Christmas or Hanukkah or our birthday, are these things that we think we want. And oftentimes as children or as adults, we receive these things that we think we want. And before long, they're discarded. Or before long, they have outgrown their usefulness to us or no longer entertain us. And truly, they are not a gift. They're just a thing. A true gift, in my mind, is something that adds to your experience, that is never discarded, but is enriched, rather, with the deepening of the knowledge and the information and the wisdom that is gleaned by the experiences. So, as I was thinking about doing this show today, I thought, how can I help people begin to trust themselves? And I will tell you honestly, there has been countless times that I haven't trusted myself, that I have missed opportunities that because I was afraid or apprehensive or I didn't know where to go, but mostly because I didn't know how to trust myself. And so I think that part of our intuition and part of our sensory perceptions and our senses are an inborn language that life offers us to help us to learn to trust. I trust that if I touch something hot, that I will indeed be burned. So it is not the kind of trust that we think we can hand over our, ourselves to, but the kind of trust that we know that a particular outcome will happen. The big challenge that we have as human beings is that our language has been man so manipulated. Our language and our words have multiple meanings by design. And these variations of words that, that sound the same but have completely different meanings have caused untold challenges for people because they don't know how to think in a spherical way, meaning they don't know how to see with a greater depth of perception. So let me give you an example. The word one, O-N-E, and the word one, W-O-N. They have very distinct meanings. So you have to know the context in which it is being used. So O-N-E is representational in or very early language of mathematics, of being representational of light, of the sun, of intuition, of enlightenment, but also is synonymous with computation and a singularity of a number, O-N-E. It also can be used as an identifier if someone were to say, you are the one, meaning you are the singular, you are the one set aside. Then there is also the word W-O-N, which means I have won, I have bettered someone else, I have scored a higher, I have gathered the prize to me. So why I'm using this example of our language is when we are receiving information intuitively, you can hear a word that could have multiple meanings 
And you have to learn to decipher what does it mean. Um, let me back up and say to those who are listening, when I say the word here, it does not mean that I audibly hear someone else's voice, which is the easiest way to describe, like catching a fish in the river. You catch it, you have an understanding, and you have it, and it is a word. Where it's more accurate for me to say, a thought came into my mind. So when we think, we often think in pictures, we think audibly, because we understand our given language, in my case, English. But I beginning to understand other languages so I can understand a deeper meaning of what that language means in relation to a same concept. So we have neglected, I think, culturally, to embrace all that our body is capable of in terms of our senses and our intuition so that we can learn to navigate life easier or more, at least more joyfully. So when I am doing a, either a group reading, which I will be doing this coming Wednesday, and I'll explain the difference between a group reading and an individual reading and a distance reading or a phone reading, how we perceive information regardless of distance. We perceive information regardless of where we are and where another person is. But if we are present with someone, we can easily be distracted by our cultural perceptions of what we're seeing or the intonation in which we hear someone speak. But if we're physically present with someone, so I'm just giving you an idea of when I'm doing an audio, a, a group reading and an individual reading where someone is physically present with me, I have learned, as many people have, to look at the energy field and see the vibrancy of it or the dullness of it that is giving me information about what is being said or the health of the individual. It's all language. In this time of a new awakening, in this time called the time of the prophecy of change, I believe that we are being unshackled and that those things that have bound us like a shackle to a very narrow band of distance, a very narrow band of believing, a very narrow band of information offered to us, and that maybe that's cultural, maybe that's ethnic, maybe that has to do with your denomination. But we are often very limited by what we have been taught by those around us. If we are wise, we begin to seek out ways of discovering what it means to feel, what it means when we listen to someone's tone of voice, what it means when we watch someone's actions, what it means when a thought comes into our mind. As a healer and as an intuitive, again, these are terms that I believe are synonymous with all human capacity, but because of the direction my life has taken, I have chosen to 
really study and hone these skills to the best of my ability and the time that I have. But I have attempted to broaden my understanding by um, getting into relationships of, with individuals as mentors, as teachers, as friends, as fellow healers, so that we can begin to learn a common language that has no cultural direction. So I'm going to give you an example. As I am working with individuals, uh, for instance, doing a healing, I am very, um, very particular about how I ask questions because I try very diligently not to lead someone into what they feel, but rather to guide someone in, in experiencing and acknowledging what they feel. So it is very common as I'm working with an individual to say to them, please tell me what you feel. And almost without exception, because I've been there myself and I've spoken with thousands of people about this, they will tell me what they think and not what they feel. Because in our system of beliefs, we are terrified of being wrong. We are terrified of appearing foolish, of not having the right answer, of not knowing where to go or how to be directed. And as a consequence, we, we go more with our thinking rather than what our body is telling us. So I try to gently redirect someone if they tell me, well, I feel happy. Well, happy is not a feeling. Happy is an emotion. And I try to gently guide them back into, well, what does this tactile sensation feel like? And almost invariably, people will say, well, it's hard to describe. And my response is, try to find a word that best fits it. So that you're broadening your language. When we name something, it doesn't mean we actually know it, but it creates a possibility of a memory so that when a feeling is felt repeatedly, that memory of how we have named it to the best of our ability using our limited language helps us to begin to identify what something feels like. And so always when I am working with somebody, whether it's doing an intuitive reading or an energy healing, because they really require the same thing, which is a fully grounded body, my body, so that all of my sensory perceptions are working at their optimal in that moment. So that whatever information I am perceiving, whether it's something that I see, literally see, or it's something I intuit or see in my imagination. Imagination means image coming to life. So image com coming into my awareness. Our imagination is not fantasy. Our imagination is that part of our ability to begin to formulate ideas. So it's, it behooves us to begin to understand the importance of our imagination, our ability to imagine, and therefore begin to bring ourselves into a relationship of some kind with information, with knowledge, with wisdom, and ultimately, hopefully, with clarity. 
so that as we begin to understand these skills, we're building and building and building information. Often, unfortunately, in many psychic realms, and those who perceive themselves as psychic, there is often a very um, narrow focus of wanting to talk with the dead. And that's understandable because we have built relationships with individuals, we experience the loss. But what I have understood about this part of our life is that we kind of miss the point of when we only want to talk to the dead because it we are longing for something that has already occurred and wanting it to reoccur instead of experiencing and expressing and appreciating what we have learned about ourselves and other human beings by relationships. And it is often, often with a death or the severing of the physical life from the spirit from the physical body, which is ultimately death, that unawareness of how important that person really was to us becomes evident. So we long for what is incomplete. We long for someone to can remain present. And so I always hesitate to really concentrate on speaking solely to the dead, except for the understanding that they are a part of us. And invariably, our humanness wants to know that we are still connected. And the reality is we always are because their DNA is within us. We did not come by osmosis into this existence. We came by the coming together of a male and a female whose genetic traits are within us. But because of that blending, there is an expansion. So I think that as intuitives, as people who are teaching others, what I think is very important to really share is if we do get information from deceased individuals, which I have many, 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 many times, their information always is exuberant and joyful. And what they say is, please live. Please learn to let go of the challenges that you have helped to create. Please learn to see and to feel and to hear and to know and to use the body that you have so that you can have this life. And so that all that is possible because you have a body can expand your experience of life, contribute to the betterment of life, and help to untie the knots of information, cultures, beliefs that have limited our thinking intentionally. So this notion of our intuition is really needs to be demystified. So if something that is a mystery is something either hidden or unknown. 
and mostly what we mean is hidden. If it is a mystery, in truest sense, and it is never brought to our attention, we never think about it. So once something becomes a part of our interest, then we are being given the opportunity to begin to learn. So then we have an opportunity of unfolding a mystery so that this journey of discovering is just the beginning. Again, in the notion of discovering, the word discovering has been used throughout uh, national understanding and to be synonymous with ownership, which is not true. So again, we have to learn the language of which we speak. I will say what continues to come to mind was an opportunity that I had to be interviewed by a fellow host when I was on Psychic Radio. And this to me was so poignant. And I was kind of put on the spot by this host that without asking me, they said, hmm, on air, live, they said, would you be willing to do some readings for people on the phone right away? And I didn't want to say no, so I said yes. And I remember still to this day, and this comes to me very often, was that there was a young man who came to me in spirit. So when I say a young man came to me in spirit, this is what I mean. This is my perception. In my mind's eye, I saw an image of a young man, and his age was, was relatively obvious. He wasn't a child. He wasn't an infant. He wasn't an elder. He wasn't an, a senior citizen. He appeared to be in his 20s. So that was my first impression. And there was this feeling that I had of this love that was exuding from him at the same time of having this other feeling of deep sorrow. And what I understood was that he had died very suddenly, tragically, and that he wanted his family to, now these are words that are coming into my mind, so quote unquote hearing, but there was an urgency about it because I was being put into a time frame that was very limited. The, the information needed to be immediately received as if I just picked up the phone myself, was having a conversation with somebody. And he wanted his family to include his unborn child in their lives. And later I learned that this young man had indeed just found out that his girlfriend was going to have a baby and that he had just died the day before in a crash, a car crash. And that he didn't want to go, but he did go. But the message was, please love my child. And it was what we need to understand, why I'm sharing that with you now, is because what this intuitive information shared with me through spirit, of which we are all a part, is that we are here to love. We are here to be inclusive with one another. We are here to not just 
judge. We are here to really bring together the best of ourselves to contribute with life, to be creative with life, which is already the greatest uh, creative force that, there, that we know of, that we can imagine, and we are already a part of it. We already are born with the systems built within our physical body to help us to do this. But we have been entrained to neglect our body, to be fearful of our body, to be ashamed of our bodies, to be unwilling to recognize that our diversity is our gift, that our, the only way we can understand the totality of, or as much as possible understand, is by having many perspectives. But if we don't know how to use the skills that we have already been gifted with, then we are bound to fail at living life fully. So our intuition, in my mind, is something that we should learn to embrace. When, imagine if you would, how our world would change if every person was taught how to observe energy, how to see what is emanating from an individual. An aura, which is our human physiology, the visible light that is around us, the aura is the magnetic field created by the electrical current moving within us. We would immediately know, based upon what we see and feel, because it's both tactile and visual and auditory, by the way, whether the person is speaking the truth. You can see it if you know what you're looking at in someone's aura. There's actually, as you might be aware, um, entire studies of, of observation of human expression that can signify truth or untruth being stated. Many years ago, about 25 years ago now, I was working in hospice, and I remember having the privilege of having a gentleman come to be a hospice volunteer who was a retired FBI profiler, which I found absolutely fascinating because he helped us, helped me. It was actually in a private conversation. And then later he expanded a little bit with other people. How is it that you're trained to see what the body immediately does reflexively, reactively, unconsciously that can signify whether something is being hidden? So this skill set that this gentleman had in which he was trained to teach others how to do was the skill of observation. So but preceding that, all humans see and feel. It's unfortunate that in this case he had to, he was looking at mostly those who were trying to be deceptive, but it's just as likely that we could learn how to discover the skill set that says, hmm, there's something unknown here. For instance, if someone had a physical problem that they themselves didn't even know existed yet, if you could see it and learn to witness it in the aura, you might be able to find some ways to help it, help it to be resolved. If 
there was an inability for someone to express how they were feeling. If they were sorrowful or they were sad or they were anxious or they were uncertain, the, the, the way the energy looks, could you could learn how to be more inclusive and helpful with this individual. But we have so often been taught to judge the things we don't understand. So I think it's really important that we begin as human beings to discover the capacity of our body, to discover what our sensory perceptions are helping us to know, helping us to participate with, and I believe that when we begin to embrace these things more, we would learn to become less divisive with one another, less judgmental of one another, less um, willing to be separate and, and exclus exclusory to one group of people or another. It's um, an opportunity that we have um, to decide to embrace if we want to. But I try every day as a healer and as an intuitive to first pay attention to myself. Honestly, just yesterday, I had an intuitive thought that I ignored. I knew that it was an intuitive thought because an, an image repeatedly came into my mind. A word and a name repeatedly came into my mind. And I'm really recognizing why I did that to myself. So even sometimes we are our own worst enemy. Sometimes we neglect to see that every interaction that we have is a gift to help us understand the language of life. Our intuition is the language of life. I often look out in the natural world or walk around in the gardens and the, near the waters and near the woods and I just attempt to observe what the natural world is doing and has done so flawlessly for tens of thousands of millennia. And that is to respond to one another collaboratively. And it appears to be effortless. And to me, it's a teaching of how do I learn to recognize that I am a part of this too. I am not simply an observer. I am not simply an outsider. I am not a foreigner to life. I am a part of life. I am being gifted the opportunity to live a life, my life. But my life is not singular. My life is not alone. My life is in relation to everyone and everything that I interact with. It could be no other way. And when I begin to look at this reality, then I realize I have nothing to be afraid of and I have much to learn. And what I have also learned is that I have a very limited time here, as we all do. We never know whether we'll be here to see another day. So I would like to encourage you to look around, to pay attention to the senses that you have, to not be afraid of what they're telling you, 
to be just still for a moment and ask, what should I know? Where is it that I am meant to go? What is it I am meant to learn? So that life is not just one challenge after another. But life is one opportunity after another. One opportunity to grow and to learn. And we have so unfortunately been so dismissive of ourselves. And the gentle ways of interacting with life so that the mysteries can begin to be integrated as part of who we are. And the mystery unfolds and joy unfolds. So I would invite you to listen to your intuition, life's silent navigator, and begin to learn to respect it, listen to it, and engage with it. Learn its language and its intricacies so that you can contribute to life and make it better for yourself and others. I appreciate you. I would appreciate it if you want to have any questions. You're more than welcome to reach out to me at my website, which is elaingroman.com. You can reach out to me on my email, which is elaine at elaingroman.com. If you have any questions, I am happy to answer them if I'm able. If you have suggestions for shows, please feel free to include those as well. Thank you so much. This is Elaine Groman on Empower Radio. The show is Earth Wisdom Circles. Please be a part of your own life and embrace the mystery that is so beautiful. Thank you so much. Have a great day.